welcome sister to load bearing beams. This time, hey, I'm crooning. Is Suge Avery just a crooner? No, she's a like a saloon yeah, gal. She's a little, little bit of a crooner. That's not crooning. She sings the she blues. Sings, sister, hey, no. I don't think you're allowed to. What? Sister, hey. No. <laughs> no, I meant to sound like Frank Sinatra. <laughs> oh, it's really bad. Shit. No, um, no, she sings the blues. I mean, whatever. It's different. <laughs> okay. Uh, any- you wait. The energy she puts into those, those, those numbers that she does in the movie. I mean, clearly that's not crooning. Yes. Clearly, everyone. Can- yes. My problem Especially with crooning is that it takes movie. is that you could be mid nap in croon. That's my problem with that's crooning. Right. There's no I'd freaking energy. There's a little bit of crooning to sister. But everything else, she it's called delivers Miss high energy. Blues. It is not called sister. Sorry, Miss Ely's Blues, paren, open paren, sister, close paren. You are adding that to the song, and you're not the artist. All right, so really hi. Weird. You know that Britney Spears' song, Hit Me Baby One More Time, is called parentheses, hit me, close parentheses, dot, 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 baby, one more time. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? What's the deal with? Yes. I've never understood that the was parentheses to start a song title. Right. I had no prior thoughts before we started speaking. <laughs> like, what? Like, I know what you're thinking, though I haven't said anything yet. That's kind of what it feels like. Uh, uh, I'd weird. like to read an explanation for what parentheses even... Well, don't you usually, think... Yeah, I feel like they're inappropriately... I mean, usually used. it's Do- your alternate title for your song. Or it's like, if your song is called something else, like... It what is it, you, like Lonely Song, parentheses, the Pina Colada song? Right. But don't you think it's because the hit me like stood out more in the song than they maybe originally intended? So take those parentheses out and just call it Hit Me Baby One More Time because that's the yeah, line. Yeah, but they would like to stay true to what they... I'm not going to defend Britney Integrity Spears. Integrity of the artist. Maybe they didn't want to be so violent about it. Okay, so just like a gentle, like it's like hit a me. gentle it's a suggestion. Hit, hit, hey, if you hit choose me, to baby one more time, like that. N- n- hit me. Disagree. So this is a podcast where we talk about movies and relationships. I am Lacey Roth. I'm Matt Stokes. We are married to each other. Married couple here, hosting a podcast. Hosting it. Um, and roasting each other. So what we do on this podcast is we take a movie that we have not seen in a long time. When we used to used to watch it a lot a long time ago, loved it, liked it a lot, at least back in the day. And it's some on some level, it is shocking to hear that someone you know didn't see this movie because it was ubiquitous in your childhood or adolescence. It just was. You didn't even. I, I, I very often find that these movies that fall into the load bearing beams category are movies. I feel like I didn't go looking for them. They found me. They they just were available. Mm-hmm. There's no real reason why I got stuck on cer- certain ones, but it's just well, I guess this is what TBS wanted. And uh, kind of a difference. You would. This is fair, right? Difference between between the movies I pick, the movies you pick, is mine. Yours mine are, are much more. I was gonna say much more like popular and blockbustery. Like so you, good. Th- no, I'm not. No, what's pop- popularity does not I mean goodness. I think I do have a lot more of what you would call cult classics. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like mine, ten, my, Star Wars. You haven't seen Star Wars, and yours is like, you know, uh, welcome to the dollhouse. Fred. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah. haven't seen Drop Dead Fred? Well, there's even movies I picked that I, that I did not know were cult classics like um, Empire Records. I thought that was super part of everyone's uh, growing up. And how else do you figure out what to wear in the morning? You've got to well, be... Like, no, but but it, it's, it was not a hit movie, but it developed a huge following right. on home video and on TV. Yeah. But what you're saying That's is... That's where I came in. I just didn't know it wasn't a big hit. Okay. It would be, a movie having done well... At the box office. Never, like. yeah, never factored in. I feel like because I mainly only got to see movies in the dollar show, you know, where you pay a dollar. Yeah. So, and I think everything just kind of ends up at the dollar show. So it's just, there's no, I was not aware of reviews or, you started reading Siskel and Ebert like way early, developing tastes. Well, I would watch Siskel and Ebert. And I thought I, you read the. Um, Roger Ebert is the one I read. 
Oh, you Gene fucking... Siskel's reviews are not available online. Roger Pop Ebert. This mother. Roger Ebert Fuck. was early on the internet, and he put all his reviews on the internet, and it was great. And Roger Ebert fucking loved The Color Purple. Really? Which is the movie that you chose this week. I did. I did. Which is... So, let's just say this. We were... You heard about us, the Spielberg documentary on, on HBO. Uh-huh. I am a freak for a doc. Yeah. So you said, let's watch one. And I said, nipples are hard. Let's do that. Yep. And um, and while we were watching it, we we both stumbled upon a load-bearing beam. The docu- it was a good documentary, right? Oh uh, Yeah. But it's it. good in like a, it shows a lot of clips of movies and you're like, these movies are good. But it also, I did not, it, it told me a lot about his process yeah. and the things that, and the, the groundbreaking stuff that I had no idea. To me, he's just blockbuster guy who can't figure out how to do something wrong, except for when he does. But to see how the struggles, and I, I really like the parts of um, finding out who he came up with. And I just like the fact that he's just really good friends with very talented directors, and they're not competitive amongst each other. Yeah. I always like hearing about things that are nice. Me too. George Lucas is his best friend. Yeah. And as is... Francis Ford Coppola and Martin Scorsese and Brian De Palma. Yeah, they all... And how freaking lucky that they all have a... All different. Yeah. It's not even like they're each in each other's territory, which is exactly probably why they are the ones we are talking about. They're not talking about that that shit director that's over there on the far left of the picture that they just didn't bring up in the documentary. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I can't think of an example of a bad director. Or I would have thrown a name right, out. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I can't either. But um, that's where you come in. But so the, the but the point is, we were watching this movie, and both of us realized, like, oh, I love that movie. I haven't seen it in a while. I'm not sure if it's your thing. Um, we should do it on the podcast. I can't believe I haven't thought about doing it on the podcast. Right. So and yours, mine was Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and I barely have heard of it. It's and there's no imagery in there that it, it is at all familiar. Mm-hmm. And um, yours. And mine was the color purple. Was the color purple. And then the caveat is I've seen the color purple. But I saw it once, mm-hmm. exactly one time, and it was when I was a teenager, and I have very little memory of it. It left no impression on me other than, like, I, I watched it because Roger Ebert, because I just worshipped everything he said, I just agreed with. Yeah. I, I think I've said this before, but now when I go back and read him, I find I don't agree with him on very much mm-hmm. anymore. But oh, really? I just... It, it, just he, generally? It, I just... That's his taste true. is, like, doesn't really align with... He doesn't have great taste. My taste. <laughs> or no, it's not like that. Doesn't. It's just like the things that he loves, I don't tend to love. Oh, okay. And then like he he was very dismissive of lots of things that I love. But my, well, uh, my point is like I just I watched it dutifully and like I don't think it made any impact on me at all. I just like, well, that was good. And that's interesting. I mean, because I'm the exact opposite. I was so, in fact, uh, just drawn like it hurt in a good way to watch it and i'm sure it's because it ended up having a very spielberg completely uh, palatable ending you mm-hmm. know where you couldn't expect anything better than if it had left me sad it I, gives I you would, the goods at the end yeah it's, i wouldn't have seen it as many times as i did as you like to say it's a it's a, it's a sneeze that comes out no this is not a sneeze no no <laughs> A crygasm movie. That's that's not what I was talking about. You just use the metaphor of a sneeze a lot. It's like you have to sneeze, and finally at the end of the movie, he lets you sneeze. No, again, no, because a sneeze is a lot like an orgasm. It's something that's completely useless until the actual eruption happens. That's not what this movie was. This movie was useful all the way through. My girl was a crygasm, which I also relate to a sneeze, because the whole time you're not enjoying the feeling you're having, that buildup of I'm going to need to do something soon. Mm -hmm. Sure. And then you sneeze, and it's like it's like the kind of sneeze where it was interrupted. Right. Like that. That, that okay. didn't even fucking feel good. So I, I got it exactly wrong. You got it exactly wrong. Okay. All right. Uh, well, let's go chronologically and talk Close Encounters, and then Close oh, you really threw me there. I was all ready to purple it up. Let's do yours. Close Encounters of the Third Kind. That's not it. Did 
Did it get it? Wow, the glass just shattered right here in our kitchen. <laughs> mm. uh, this is a film uh, by Steven Spielberg from 1977. It was his follow-up to Jaws, which was the biggest movie of all time and it invented the modern blockbuster and the modern family film. People uh, uh, criticized Spielberg for basically uh, destroying adult cinema and making the movie industry center around catering to teenage boys because you get a teenage boy and you can get the whole family, basically. Though we did Jaws on this podcast and you really good. said something like, no, well, yeah, it's great. But you said, like, I don't really get why it's a family movie or like. Yes, this was when, this well, because this is at a time when people weren't giving their letting their kids wear a seatbelt. It was seen and not heard. Children era, smoke in the kitchen, child raisin. You, I'm saying they weren't so careful with their with their delicate little psyches just yet. Let's go watch a terrifying eat a child and see some titties. Yes, movie. exactly. Right. Um, this movie too, Close Encounters, way this more was so a than Jaws. Movie? Doesn't seem like it would be you could he, I you don't couldn't see... make this movie today or this movie wouldn't play to a wide audience today. No, at the time it was huge. It, it didn't make as much money as Jaws, but it made it was one of the biggest movies of the year. This was the same year that Star There's Wars came anything out. Anything in here for kids? Do I... you think that? Well, me, do you think it, you think Macy would enjoy? No, it? no, because it's too slow. Yes, okay. it is. It's it, there's a lot. Okay, here's. I think I missed the boat on this movie because I think it must be doing something way more awe inspiring for the time, visual effects wise, uh, and yeah, just certainly. the concept of like the idea of making contact with with an, with aliens in like a peaceful way. Mm-hmm. I mean, he wants you to feel a very kind of sentimental. It didn't feel earned. These long, like. You know, pans across the the crowd of people who are in awe. That all and worked in, for me. And in wonder. Yeah. Well, can we I let's, just hold felt, on? Felt let's forced. Yeah. let's give a little context. Um, Please. The the movie stars Richard Dreyfuss as Roy Neary, who I love. He uh, is a family man, and he is works. He? he he he's a family man in that he is a man with a family. Yeah. And uh, this is this takes place in Muncie, Indiana, and uh, it's a very you know like Stranger Things basically just studied this town to make its show mm-hmm. which also takes place in indiana the ethos of stranger things and a lot of like that kind of thing comes from this close encounters and then especially et like those are the okay. i think those are like the urtext for that kind of thing for just suburbia not stephen king stephen king too but i, th- I would say if, if you're gonna point to movies i'd say you so point to this mean. one and to et oh yeah i don't i i like the the in, house in is that, messy. In, well, okay, that I like, and I like that you pointed it out too, because I got to like enjoy that. But um, I found in ET and in this movie, it seems both like there's the oper- there's 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 normal compact neighborhoods, and then random farm houses. That ET's ET's house seemed far away from everything. Mm-hmm. And so did Barry's house in this one. No, they were just in, like, subdivisions. It just seems so removed. Maybe just the family seems... It just seemed like there was a lot of field and stuff around it. But he drives out. He has to, like, drive out to the to the fields to inspect a power outage. It's not like those fields are right next to his house. He'd have to drive there. Yeah. I don't um, know. So, so, but <laughs> it's a movie about aliens. And uh, <laughs> it's uh, parallel narratives because you follow Dreyfus who, uh, while he's out one night trying to fix a power grid, sees an alien spaceship, and it kind of ruins his life because he becomes obsessed right. with it. Um, and this happens to many people throughout the world, and we follow uh, another handful of characters who are also impacted by this, including Melinda Dillon, the mom from A Christmas Story, who plays Jillian, and she has her young son, Barry. Who cannot put on a bra to save uh-huh. the world but just strap those titties up they you were, were just, very bothered by they were lower than they were supposed to be and i think i was supposed to be turned on i wasn't you think you were supposed to be turned on i think it's supposed to be sexy that she wasn't wearing a bra it was certainly super obvious and i cannot respect a mother who sleeps in jean shorts with a tucked in shirt that's right. Uh, okay, everything it, oh, she did and said bothered you. Me, off. like not hate, not not like a silly like put on a bra way, but like you no, were upset I, by her mothering. I, I wanted yes, I wanted to stop watching it like ten minutes in because that beautiful little boy Barry, he's got the scariest toys I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. They all are going off, and that sweet little angel's not scared. He just reminds me of 
my boy. He's like, oh, these toys feel the need to play, and I'm trying to sleep. I guess I'll just let them. Oh, now I'll be delightfully amused by He looks, he's just so walks, sweet. and acts a lot like our, yes, our son. Yes, and he never complained. He's just going with the flow, uh-huh. and he walks downstairs. He's got a crazy farmhouse. That little boy walked down the stairs. If okay. like yeah, I think if Sully were running to an alien spaceship, like and we were watching from out the window, we'd be like, Sully and he would turn around to look at us, but it'd be like but the aliens, I gotta go get to the to the aliens. I just uh, she took forever to wake up. When she did wake up, she was fully dressed in something very unpractical to, to go to sleep in, so that made me think fell asleep drunk. And she just yells out what? the window at Barry the whole time. Barry Barry, come back. Barry. Barry. Like, get your ass downstairs. Maybe there's some sort of, like, 1970s detached parenting me generation well, what, thing. But I didn't feel... I, she's a single mother. She's stressed out. And, and uh, uh, maybe she's, she wants she's trying to the best she can. Maybe she kind of wants him to go. Maybe. Maybe she'd rather just be someone who lost a child. But the, the point is... Yeah. He gets a he gets obsessed. You know, a three year old who can barely talk gets obsessed with the aliens, and there's something awesome about that idea. Yeah. Uh, he's, what if your kid saw aliens and it totally warped their life too? Uh, what I mean. That would be called a learning disability. The parallel narrative is that you have like government or just I don't know if they're I don't know who what they are or what they're doing, but they're studying the aliens. They're archaeologists, map maker, map government, government bureaucrat. Park ranger people. And they're... This movie has problems. Okay, go ahead. What are the problems? It's... <laughs> there's very little to enjoy about it. I just... I, I like the whole, like... Like, we just ha- we had some kind of crazy disturbance. And, and there were, there's enough people in the world that did see UFOs. Like, it did happen. But not everybody's convinced. Some people are still in denial. I like all that. I like mm-hmm. that the people who are completely taken with it set up their chairs. And they're sitting on the side of a very charming, like, hilltop yeah. road or whatever. Yeah. And they're waiting for them to come back. I, I like that they all seem to know where to be to see it. I like that that Jilly and the mom has this instant bond with, um, with Roy. Was that his name? Richard like, Dreyfus. Was Roy what? Roy Neary. Neary, yeah. <laughs> that you know that it's like this unspoken thing of I I see you I get you I liked all that worked for me but it just didn't earn the other weird there weren't things tied up like the the plane that they discover yeah. Why is the World War Two? It doesn't explain, and I've seen this movie many times now. It doesn't explain, or at least I can't track. Um, but I'm never bothered by the fact that I can't track exactly what happens because the these airplanes from World War Two mysteriously reappear in the Mexican desert, and like this ship that disappeared in like the 1910s is in the Gobi Desert, and like the aliens have been taking people, and I guess taking vehicles, transportation vessels. Taking them up into space, and now they're returning them. Um, oh, I didn't consider that they were returning them. I thought they were just revealing them, like they were. Big. I don't know why it matters, but I mean, I don't know why my difference. Uh, but like, okay, they get a like, like binary code transmission from the aliens that gives them coordinates. But then when they're setting up at Devil's Tower, Wyoming, there's like a crew that's ready to go. And like, how did? Right. How, How did, did they know that they'd get to send a crew onto the ship when they can can't even the only thing that they can communicate to the aliens is musical notes? So I've never been able to figure out all of that. And who are that these people and like what are they doing? That seems like a failure on their part. But I've never really cared because it just seems more emotional than anything else. And I, I, I like it's so it works so it really really gets me. Um, <laughs> it does. The, and you even like you even said oh when the alien comes out and does sign language and then smiles. There's, there's just yeah yes I, but, it was it was revolutionary to say what if we met aliens and like instead and of it being nice, the end right? of the world they were just nice and, and yeah. curious about us and like the little baby aliens are like touching Richard Dreyfuss like oh this is awesome um, so he left his sort of, entire family yes and, like, and that's we're interesting su- and we're supposed to think he's a hero we're supposed I don't to think, think so. it's nice okay I mean so Spielberg has addressed this because he. Okay. I think this is a very personal movie for he him. He said that it was. He said that this is a, a person obsessed. That in in the documentary, there's a handful of movies that he really gets into, and mm-hmm. you can tell like those movies mean a lot to him. And this was one of them well, because he said that because um, he said it was the most autobiographical movie of all the okay. ones he made. Um, 
No, oh, okay. I didn't remember that he literally said that. I just feel like I just said like it. internalized that. So, oh, did you? Yes, I internalized it. Wow, with maybe my it's because you fucking said it. Yeah, I, I I do that sometimes. Okay. You know what's interesting is, um, <laughs> um, the idea of he being has obsessed. since said like I don't view that character the same way. Like in the in back in 1977, I totally would have gotten on the alien ship, but I have kids now, and I think like, no, this guy sucks. He shouldn't. Right. You can't abandon your family like that. But I think he identifies with him as a as an artist who just like gets obsessed and hooked on this thing. Like you can't yeah. I mean, execute like a, your artistic a, vision a fantasy without fulfillment. totally like, destroying wish, your family's life. Right. Wish fulfillment. Like he couldn't really do it in real life, but he can make this character just completely commit and get on that ship. You know, wish fulfillment. Yeah, and he, he even like there's a scene where Roy like decides like, Oh, I'm done with this. I'm gonna try to get my act together, but then he just he's making a sculpture and it's it not going anywhere. So he like tries to take it down and then in taking it down he accidentally makes it look exactly like how he wants to make it and he's like, Whoa Okay, never mind, call off my getting my act together, now I'm totally back <laughs> into this. Um so the definitely the metaphor for an artist definitely seems there. Also I kinda of thought like kind of like religion or, or a cult maybe a cult more specifically is you you get this sort of inspiration that like i have to devote myself oh, to right. this like it's it's more nothing moral. else matters it's more moral to follow wherever that thing is yes. leading you than it is to stay with what with might seem to be morals yes. for other people like you've been shown something that no that if they can't understand it well that's not your problem you still have to go fulfill the thing you've been shown or mm -hmm. yeah you just have to wait for them to see the light if they ever will. Yeah. I, um, I really wanted you to like this movie. I, was... I, I did not like it. I just feel like it, it tried to be something better than it was. It, I, I think its goals were not met. I feel it, like there's the, the, the too... goal of like wanting to really, really awe, like inspire awe in you at the end. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was just like 2001 Space Odyssey. It just goes a few beats too far at the end. Like, I'm not as into this as you want me to be. And yeah. that's that's your problem, not mine. I, I've i been paying attention. You also seemed like, like not exactly knowing what kind of movie it was, seemed like it stressed you out. It, because was, it, it like, really stressed they me were, out. They were, you know, randomly the volume would go up when there's a sound effect or, or something in the score. And it would just make you jump. And you said this is... this is Right. It was, a, it was not a relaxing movie. It makes you movie. anxious. Yes, but what's, I did. For, I... And not that I need to be relaxed when I'm watching a movie, but like, I like to have some kind of anticipation of what I'm getting into. Mm -hmm. And it, the movie never revealed itself to to give me that understanding. I didn't think I was sitting down to watch a horror movie. I, I, I didn't even consider it a sci-fi movie. I was just thinking like family blockbuster thriller movie. Not. Yeah. I, I don't. It's just like. I think that. I don't it actually it reminds it's like if the whole of Jurassic Park were just them getting to the island and seeing the dinosaurs and being like, Wow, dinosaurs. And they then do, something bad happens. They do move in hoods. No, no, no. And then just like it just goes on and they continue to look at awesome dinosaurs. Okay. And like the park works perfectly. Like that's that's what this movie sort of is. Except for it's it doesn't not have relaxing the turn like where, that. I find it very relaxing. Like I find so it very what I'm soothing. Movie. I found, it's well maybe because you knew where it was. I knew going. yes, of course. But it's aliens. It's a man's family in trouble. It's a woman who lost her child. Yeah, she it's never a, seems that. It's a world turned upside down. I had no way to anticipate that it was just going to end just whatever. Fine. There's no real tragedy. There's just little small ones. But you can get over them. I, there's just no... It didn't know what well, it was. If, and I didn't and know when, what it was. If and when humanity makes contact with aliens, uh, there will be no time for small tragedies. Are you? What are you fucking telling me I'm right now? Like, Thank you, doctor. Uh, That's not my fucking point. My point is, I'm watching a movie that I think is going to end in calamity, and it's one way or another, it's going to have something that breaks my heart. It didn't, but I had no way of knowing that until I got to the end of that stupid fucking boring ending. I'd like. This. That's why it's great. I think. Maybe watching it this as many times as you have it. No, fuck you. The, uh, what I do, there are definitely things I like. I just didn't feel like on the whole it was anything special. You really liked the movie Arrival, which this movie is like a spiritual successor to, I think. Mm -hmm. I really liked, 
Richard Dreyfuss's character. I like that the entire time, no matter how bad or weird his life gets, he's smiling all the time. Yeah, he's like, he's, he's really amused. good at playing a quietly weird. Like he I really is. I find him weird. Like he's just like he's just lovely. He loses his mind in a nice way. Like he, he does loses in a his very mind in a very way. believable way. That if you saw your neighbor doing, like you two would like, you'd probably go outside to watch and also be like, holy shit, this right. is fucked up. Um, but, right, but he's ki- still but I'm gonna very continue likeable. watching. Yeah. yeah, right. Like, there's something not threatening about his insanity. It's just like, oh, there he goes. Yeah, but uh, Arrival, right, is about like if aliens aliens show up, mm-hmm. and we don't know how to communicate with them. Right. Uh, and in that movie, that movie is actually devoted to like how can we actually figure out how to communicate with something. Mm-hmm. Where this movie has the music, that movie has an actual like that's sign language thing. that they figure there, out. There's uh-huh. all these things that seem just not un- like that's the theme. Things are unearned. What. They just don't, they don't bother explaining enough things that they then want to reveal as like, oh, well, duh, of course there was a whole troop of orange people who were, or jumpsuit people who were going to aboard the ship. The, of course there's this, that this, this very simple tone thing is going to evolve into a whole language that we're going to learn immediately. Like it's, it's all, and, and that, and that language, if they do have the right kind of conversation due to this language that they figured out. They're going to release all these people we knew were coming out of this ship? Yeah. I, How the fuck did they know? I agree. I agree with all those. I agree with all that. And, like, it kind of does hurt them. It kind of. I don't think they needed the people part. I, yes. I dock points because, like, it would be more meaningful if literally the only thing we can get, we can communicate between us is these musical notes. And it's just like, that's yeah, it. She's that's like, it. they copy it and you're like, wow, hey. And that's enough for them to, like, you exist and introduce I exist. themselves. Great. Yeah. Well, I don't. And, and there's, it's supposed to be happy that these people from the 1910s and later, and then the World War II age, are, are, are being let out the same age that they were sucked in by these aliens to find what? Yeah, the, the, they, woman, the woman you were going to marry has been married to somebody else for 25 years. Or they're all dead. Or, or, dead. or life is completely unrecognizable and I was saying to you like well good thing this wasn't like 10-15 years later there's only white men in charge so at least <laughs> the majority of these people getting off the plane are like well this at least checks out yeah <laughs> I imagine how well, mind blowing imagine blind. getting out in Barack Obama's president or just that a, a woman a woman in um, military like seniority yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean because military um you know, three stripes, two stripes, that all has stayed the same this entire time. So a military man could get off a plane and see, like, a four-star general woman. Yeah, it's still kind of the same. What's kind of the uh, same? Oh, women are I'm super s- underrepresented in, in senior ranks in the military still. What a great fucking point. Yes. I'm just You're saying welcome. that they could decode that very fast and yes, realize yes, that's yes. fucking bizarre. Yes. And this is a very... Uh, not surprising it's the 70s it's a made by a white guy but there are very few people I just generally have problems with movies in the 70s there's a tone I just can't that's too blanket of it's a too statement bla- but it's too broad but like we have kind of come we, across this yes. in movies from Three, the 70s this, the third watched. one uh, Halloween, Halloween this Alien. one and Alien yeah okay yeah you had a problem with Alien yeah I fucking had a problem with Alien that it was bad but and put on a bra in the way that they interact, the way that they speak. Yes, there's uh, like a, it's mumblecore before there was mumblecore. Like the the audio was bad. I don't know, but it's like fucking speak up. I don't. Why can't I understand? Why don't? Why do all of you motherfuckers seem high and just completely disengaged with your reality? There's a real I don't give a fuck feeling about the parenting and the re- the relationships amongst adults. Mm-hmm. I like, there's no hero. There's no hero in any of those movies. There's no one to root for. Th- good thing I liked. Dreyfus. Ripley is one of the great cinematic heroes of all time. You're so wrong. You are fucking so wrong. So I'm not gave her so a cat. wrong. She would, what is wrong with her? How is she not a hero? She is boring as fuck. How, no, she's not. But she's this, completely, this is a dumb conversation. If, yes, well, just... She's boring. Just, no, she's not. Just listen back to the... I made my point. Okay. I'm sure Aliens is good, and I will tell you more about my feelings if I ever see that, but Alien sucked. Um, but speaking of aliens, um, must we? Well, I kind of want. Oh, wait, to... like the entities or the movie? It's just the things, the idea of aliens. You can see how I might be confused. Like extraterrestrials. Yes, I, that's why I did it. Um, oh. You know, I'm I'm working on writing this novel that is about is as, as you all know, um, I'm working on this novel uh, about 
tr- trying to take a realistic look at what would happen if we got proof that there are aliens, but that's all we got. Like aliens don't then show up. We don't know what Should they want. Should you be saying all this about your? I, I feel like this will be on the back of the book as a description for what the book is. Right. I don't know. I think this gets. I don't care. Um, this is my elevator pitch. Is 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 up on my floor. Bang. Getting off the elevator. I'm not good at elevator pitches. <laughs> We're going up to the penthouse, apparently. Can you tell me what you need to fucking say? Well, here's the thing. God. So, Men's wow. When in the course of events. Jeez. um, When and if we discover that there are aliens, um, it's going to be the biggest thing that's ever happened like the most important thing that we will have ever learned right in the history of humanity but if they're not descending at that moment if what if all <laughs> we did was learn that they're out there right and then we're just waiting what will that do to people <laughs> right. and in this movie uh you have the people in close encounters you have the people who get who have the encounter and it does things too. But then you also have the people who it doesn't happen to and what happens to them is that they're very disturbed by what's happening to the people who saw the aliens, who, right. who encountered the aliens. So you have like two types of reactions. I think there'll be like, you know, 10 million different kinds of reactions from people like worshipping aliens to preparing defenses against aliens to like not even thinking about it or acknowledging it. Like I mentioned, denial, I described yeah. I described this, not even denial. I told, my mom asked me what my book is about. And I said, <laughs> it's like this. These people get a signal from aliens and they find out there are aliens. And she's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, didn't we already get like an alien signal? Like, <sighs> okay, so I guess you wouldn't care. Right. Because no, we didn't. Uh, right. Like you would think you'd know that, but no. Uh, so look for that book sometime. <laughs> Uh, Actually, I should leak the first 80 pages. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be a hot, hot property right there. Send that to Snowden. What a scoop. Yeah. Don't you send things to Snowden to get him to WikiLeaks? You don't, no, no. You gotta, you gotta go through you're Snowden. Of, you're thinking of Julian Assange. I'm kidding. Oh. Sorry. It's okay. You can tell me I'm dumb with your stupid splaining. So, uh, that was Close Encounters, one of my favorite movies. I would put it <sighs> definitely in Spielberg's top five, I think. Behind Jurassic Park. I, jo- one, all I, two, know, is, three, I know Jaws four. is number one. I put Jaws number one. After that, it's kind of tough. Like, because I just watched, rewatched Schindler's List, and that I thought I wouldn't like it that much, but like that's a great movie. And mm-hmm. obviously, you have Raiders and ET and Jurassic Park and Saving Private Ryan and AI no, it is and, hard. And uh, it's harder than I thought. You know, I love some of the new ones too. Three, four. Love me.